first off, I'd like to thank the, the guys for not only coming to the show once, but twice. Uh, they saw, saw it first at the um, 40 seat theater when we originally did it, and, uh, and here in this theater. Three times. Yeah, three times. I saw the original reading at least right. three and a half years ago, four <laughs> years ago. Yeah. And I, I, I just have to say, John has done an amazing job of this play, at the risk of you getting more applause. But the, the first time I saw it, I didn't think there was a play here. I mean, it was a, a lot of the history and everything, and you could kind of see what he was going for, but it wasn't really working. <laughs> and, no, it wasn't. I mean, and then he just worked on it and worked on it, which is what John does. He's an he's incredible artist and a great craftsman, and I just, he's turned uh, this into a great play, and I'm just wondering. Thank you very much. Uh, did you guys know this story of Harry Hay and the Manichean Society before you saw the play? Um, and if you had heard about it, how did you know about it? And if you hadn't, why do you think you have I had heard the, of the Mattachine Society and knew that it was some gay organization, but I didn't, I didn't know the story at all. Uh, I'd heard of, of Harry, uh, probably more because of his recent appearances towards the end of his life than just reading about him in the news than knowing about uh, the of the society. So, uh, yeah, I, that was as much as I knew. I'd heard the name. I mean, Mattachine. So. Um, <laughs> I think we didn't hear about it because Stonewall sort of, uh, sort of, that's all you really heard about in terms of the history of gay rights. And uh, also, it was really more of a West Coast phenomenon, right? Yeah. So we were on the East Coast. And we're too young. Because <laughs> <laughs> Brian and I had a discussion um, after seeing the play about how much things have changed and how much things haven't changed. And uh, that discussion reminds me of how much things haven't changed because one of the big questions people always ask is, well, did you come out? When have you come out? Did you, are you gonna come out? Did you have and the answer is, you come out every single day. It is a joke to say, oh, someone came out because you only came out with the people who heard it. And uh, the fact that Brian and I from our first day of work, like in uh, on Fraser or wherever on, on television, every single person we worked with, every single person who lived near us, everybody <coughs> knew. We were very open. We were, we we didn't want to, to lie about that. But to a large segment of the country, that was meaningless. We weren't doing our job as homosexuals because we hadn't made an announcement on television, or we hadn't made the right announcement on television, or we hadn't had. And that's just the reality of being gay. Every time you meet someone who hasn't met you before and didn't happen to read the paper, or God forbid, didn't watch television, uh, you gotta tell them. And, it's, and you're coming out again. And for people of our generation, not like my nephew's generation people, for our generation, there's still that speed bump. It gets easier each time, but there's still the speed bump that you see in this play. Right. So many years ago, ancient history, or tomorrow, or the next time. You're on an airplane, and the person next to you says, are you married? Yeah. And you go, here I go again.